Hey guys, thanks a lot for joining me today. This whole video is going to be kind of a get ready with me and also reviewing the whole line of Dalton Beauty. So that was formerly known as Dalton, D-A-L-T-O-N Beauty at QVC. And I had tried a few things years and years ago, but recently what made me rediscover this brand was my video where I wanted to do a full face of makeup from only QVC. And when I asked for requests, a lot of people were intrigued by this brand. So I got that set of eye products that like included this and a brow tool, mascara and eyeliner and everything. And I had some really good luck with some of the items, so I thought I want to dive deeper. I bought more things. In the meantime, the brand actually sent me a few things. And now we're at a place where I've basically got a full face of makeup and I really know what I think about it. I think this brand as a whole is a major hidden gem in the beauty world. And as you're going to see, there are just some things that are really, really great. Again, everything in this line is available at QVC. I'll link to the items below if you're interested in more info. The benefit to them being on on QVC is that if you want to dive a little deeper, QVC tends to have one of their actual presentations explaining everything on the page of every product that they sell, so that's kind of cool. The first thing I'm going to use here, I've already prepped my skin with moisturizer and stuff, and I've got this Hydra Gel Foundation, and this is in the shade Light. This product was one of the things that they sent to me, and I find it interesting because Hydra is in the name, and I really don't find it to be an overly hydrating product at all. In fact, I feel like there's a real um, dry down with this product. It's not making my skin incredibly parched, but by the time this thing is blended in, I'm feeling really no need to set it with any powder. Let's put it that way. Like there is not a lot of moisture on the skin. I'm also using a Dalton brush here. It's like a uh, number four brush, it's like an angled foundation buffing type thing. Um, but the coverage is pretty darn good as you will see here. So I do like that. I would call it like a really strong medium coverage, almost verging on full. And just given the name and just any little preconceived notion I had on this product, I was expecting it to be a bit more hydrating. Again, I'm not feeling like it's really drying me out in a big way, but it's really not offering any additional moisture. I need a little more foundation on this one side. They also have a foundation called Hydra Lux, and I believe that was the thing, the, the one product that I had ordered from this line, and it never came. <laughs> so perhaps that one is even more deeply hydrating. But I tell you what, a little secret about this product. Um, one day I was touching up my makeup, and I felt like um, whatever product I had used it had really broken down. So I was looking to kind of retouch my foundation and concealer area. And so I grabbed for this because I knew that when it would kind of settle in on the skin, it wouldn't be super tacky, so that would almost prevent me from that extra layer of then setting it on top of a full face of makeup I was already wearing, and it looked so flawless. Such beautiful coverage, didn't look heavy, but just like totally, you know, in this zone where I put it kind of top of the cheek, under eye area, it looked great. But now here, just a couple minutes after putting it on, I mean, I can touch my skin. I feel absolutely no tackiness. I don't look dry at all, but I do look totally matte. Then for concealer, I've got a couple things. I have the Hydra Luxe concealer, which this is a concealer that really touts um, texture smoothing. That's a biggie for this one, and you see them applying it to the under eye. They talk about how it gives your skin the texture of a rose petal, um, and I feel they are valid in those claims. It's good coverage. It's not the best coverage, just skin tone under eye concealer I've ever used. Not quite going there coverage-wise as much as Shape Tape is, but it does have, I think, a good lasting power on the skin. Doesn't tend to dry me out, but is not like overly hydrating, you know? So again, with Hydra in the name, you might have a different expectation for it. But I have that one, and then I also have the Conceal It Concealer, which was one of the products back when this was Dalton Beauty. That's the last name of the brand's creator, Doris Dalton. Um, they have this product called Conceal It Concealer, and this is just a cream concealer, and I've really enjoyed this over the years. I think it's really good coverage. It's not too thick and like goopy tacky as far as a cream goes. I really do like the way this performs on the skin. I wear this in fair. If you're into this kind of format, I think it's a good product and I'm going to try to work this into some future videos. But what I really want to show today is the Hydra Lux because I want to exhibit that whole like texture smoothing claim. Now I don't have a ton of texture on my under eye, but I do have enough to where certain products make it stand out and certain ones kind of will smooth it away. So I'm going to use this. It's got a little like kind of ball tip. <laughs> I don't know if we get to call this a doe foot or what, but I'm gonna apply a little bit of this 
right here to this under eye area and also a little bit right up in here and a little around the nose. And then they have a really nice concealer brush called the number two brush. One end totally reminds me of the Sephora um, Pro Flawless Airbrush Concealer Brush, I think is what it's called. Um, but it reminds me so much of that. And then another end is just a little more like a fingertip, I'd say. So I can get right in there, get that product sort of smoothed around, go back and forth. But as you can see here, the coverage really is pretty darn good. And I do think it is texture smoothing. It doesn't remain like really, really tacky or anything on the skin. And I would say you would not feel the need to go in and set this with powder. I mean, if you want to, that's fine, but it's just not like really begging for it. But just like the foundation, it's giving you that mattified appearance, which is often a more perfected look than a really tacky, dewy look that's kind of almost catching the light certain ways that you turn. And the texture is just incredibly softened. Rose petal, I would say that's a great description because rose petals don't feel dry and crusty, but they also don't have any sort of goopy feel. You know, there's just a smoothness and there's a smoothness to the look also there in the under eye area. And again, I wear both of these in the shade light. So all in all, I would say I am pleased with these coverage products. Are these enough for a person who has extremely dry skin? I'm not sure. I would love to hear in the comments if you've had experience with these products and like how how did they perform for you if you feel you are excessively dry? Because to me, it just seems like they're not offering a whole lot of extra moisture. I think they're doing what they do well. And I know my skin is not like being sucked dry by these things, but they don't seem to be giving a lot of extra hydration. But from a coverage standpoint, I think they're doing really well. And from just the look and texture of my skin, I think it's looking really good. Sorry if it feels like I spent a lot of time talking about that kind of product, but I think it's important. Now, I don't have any sort of like face powder from this brand, just a general powder, and frankly, I don't really need it. Um, so we're just going to go straight to the bronzer. This is the bronzer that I've been talking about in like every video lately. I feel like anytime I use any other bronzer, I have to reference this bronzer and why I like it best. This is the limited edition Golden Pearl Body Bronzer. Is this truly limited edition? I feel like they sent me this quite a while ago. It's still available on QVC's website, but this is a big old powder. They do say it's a body bronzer, so you're getting plenty here, but this this is the bronzer that I feel is rooted with a little bit of red in the tone and it looks so natural. I also love that it's a little bit of a, oh gosh, it's so soft to the touch. Um, maybe a little bit of a satin finish in this, which I think also helps it look really natural on my skin. Um, so I'm gonna take some of this with my e.l.f. complexion brush. Just one tiny dip in, don't scrub across the product. And I'll put this around my hairline and I think you'll maybe see what I mean in terms of of having a look that is very naturally sun-kissed, at least for my skin tone. It's just something that the real brownish bronzers don't really do for me. And I think I've probably spent a lot of time just settling and using whatever and, you know, really bouncing around a lot. So maybe I feel like I'm getting a different look all the time with my bronzer, but this product definitely like works for me and you could totally use it on the body as well as they say, but it doesn't have to be exclusively that way. I mean, I've definitely seen people in demos and like looks on Facebook and stuff using this on the face and I really like it. I'm using it to give myself a little soft contour here, but I really do see this as being a very good traditional bronzer. Like you want a little more color to your skin, like just take it right over the top of the cheeks, top of the nose, let it happen, you know? But this is one of my favorite products from this line for sure. You almost want to wear it like up on the cheek as a little bit of a blush. That's what this tone kind of makes me want to attempt. So the skin's got some life and some color and then I realized if I was ever going to do a full face with this brand I would need to come up with a blush and so I did place an order and I got this cheek to chic blush and contour palette. So very simple packaging like this brand tends to have which I kind of like that and then here is what's inside. Two blushes. This shade is labeled as a bronzer and it actually is called golden pearl but I can assure you it is not the same as that compact I just used. If you swatch them side by side there's a complete um, texture 
texture difference. The one in the other compact is a lot softer, but the tones are totally different. Um, these two are labeled contour, which this shade is just a little too light for me to do much of anything with, but very, very fair skin tones. Might want to take note of that. And then here's your highlight shade. It's a very super subtle highlight, like even more subtle than Laura Geller Baked French Vanilla, if that gives you any context there. And then there's that peachy and then like a berry colored blush. So let's use one of the blushes. I'll use a little bit of this peach here. Don't really have a problem with either of these blushes. I would say they both have a little satiny finish. They're probably, to me, the best part of the whole palette would be those blushes because the contour is just it's okay. The bronzer, like I said, I already like the other bronzer better, and the highlight is just kind of barely there. But I feel like this is a brand that's operating with pretty dang good quality with most things, so I could see them maybe putting out a different palette with a little different shade variation, maybe a little more intense highlight, or an option between two levels of highlight, and I think we might really be onto something. And then let's show you this highlight, and then um, as we go on in the video, I found another thing in their collection that can also highlight, but um, got quite a bit on my brush. I'll just apply this here. Very, very soft. I don't know, I guess I can see a definite difference between this cheek and this cheek, right? Just very natural. I don't think this is a bad palette. I just think you gotta look at things like this and say, how many shades would I use on a regular basis? And if it's just the two blushes and perhaps a contour or the bronzer, then you're only kind of operating at half. And if you're only operating at half, then is it worth it to own it? You know, that's kind of what I would ask myself. Got that on. And I think this brand does have some kind of a setting spray, but I don't have it. So I'm going to use my L'Oreal Shake and Glow Dew Mist. Love this stuff. Love the smell of it. Oh, has anyone else tried this and smelled this since that video last week where I was talking about it? I definitely do extra miss of this stuff, but I really like just the finish of the skin after I put it on. But overall, just complexion-wise, coverage-wise, I am really pleased with what these products were able to do for me. And now we're going to move on to brows, and they have a great brow product. One of the best things they make, one of the most, um, I guess, innovative things. And this product actually came in at the tail end of the year as an Emily Award winner. This is a product called Archmaster. It's in a universal shade, and it's actually in this little pencil. Um, it's a three-in-one product. You're getting brow pencil, brow powder, and a brow gel that's tinted and has the super fine brush that I like. So let's talk about the pencil first, which this was one of those things that in the QVC video I had this, so I have discussed it before, but um, you're getting like a really skinny rectangular cut eyebrow pencil here, and that is kind of helpful in, I guess, keeping a straight line, and you're trying to keep things nice and straight. I could see that being helpful, but for me, as you can see, I've got a decent amount of brow already there, and what I'm just doing is sort of filling in any areas that might be a little more sparse, because that's the thing with dark brows. I sometimes get asked, like, why do you even do anything to your brows? Like, they look so thick to begin with. Maybe it's just me sitting here and, like, looking in my own mirror. I don't know if it shows as much on camera, but there are areas that are not as thick as others. Like I've got a scar on one eyebrow, I can definitely tell a difference. Like if we're trying to create symmetry here and looking left to right, I can see differences. And I also feel like when you've got really dark brow hair, it almost shows the contrast of those differences more. If you're new to my videos, eyebrows is usually the time where we talk about just, you know, random everyday life. I did not have a vlog this week. I'm sorry. The weekend was just really busy. At two different times, we had Bub's parents staying with us. And this feeling just kind of comes over me when I see people that I haven't seen in a while. I just don't feel right, like, taking out the camera and trying to, like, it can make me feel a little less in the moment at times, and I don't think that's a real good way to feel, especially when they're people that you don't see quite so often. And then right in between those nights, we had a big event to go to Saturday night, and it, again, wasn't really the kind of thing you would do a lot of vlogging with. So we'll get a vlog up next week, but if you missed it, that's it just kind of a busy weekend. Um, now I'm taking the powder. So how do they do this? This is like a spring loaded powder in here. So when you twist it in, that's getting closer and closer to a little well of powder. And you know, what you can do is 
use any number of these steps, any combination of them. You could skip the pencil, go straight for the powder for like the most natural look. You could feel almost like you're setting the pencil with the powder like I am right now. But I kind of see the powder step as almost like catching your mistakes. You know, this is the ultimate like, okay, you think you filled in with that pencil? Well, let me just go over everything a little bit. So it's a small sponge tip. It's a really good size. It's not oversized. And then at the end, we just go to our little gel and it's a tinted gel which I love and this gives us the hold which I think is necessary to tack on to your brow routine in pretty much every situation unless it's one of those uh, like really long wearing brow creams like the physician's formula or I think L'Oreal has one now Maybelline has one those tend to really have some hold to them but I love the fact that that's in here and it's so compact and it just makes me think of like travel and packing and you're getting ready to go somewhere and you're thinking about do I have a brow pencil do I have a brow gel blah 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 like this is everything if you just know you have this and you can throw that in your travel bag you know your brows are 100% good get some tweezers but you're good. Next we're gonna move on to some eyeshadow and I'm pretty sure I do not have like an eye primer from this brand. So I'm just gonna be using my Milani today. I guess you could use like the concealer as eye primer, but let's just stay in our lane here, shall we? Now I'm pretty sure I saw, maybe it came across my Facebook or I don't know where I saw it. I, this is always happening to me. I, I have a very clear memory of something in my head, but I don't know what format it came to me on. But I'm pretty sure this line now has a new eyeshadow palette. Um, if I can track that down, I will pop a picture up on the screen. It's still kind of a safe, neutrally looking palette overall. But the one I'm going to be using in this video is the Master Palette. So I already have um, a video using this. It was back in the QVC one. And they talk about this being a poured formula. These shadows do look different than most any other shadow you will see. Like they are filled to the top in these pans, you know? There's no indentation. There's no appearance that a metal metal pan is sitting down inside the little grid, you know what I mean? So that's kind of different. And they are all like a really smooth, very, very blendable, easy to use on the eyes. And the whole palette doesn't go too super warm. Like you do have the ability to go a little rose golden, goldeny with a couple of these shades. But if you're not into like reds and oranges and those really, really warm shades that quite a few palettes contain these days, um, you might be interested in this. But it gives you natural looks like this shimmer shades aren't crazy foiled. Like these might be a couple of the most shimmery and it's just like a soft pearly finish. There's a lot of matte in here. I know I talked about this in the QVC video, but this is more like sophisticated work look, just your general everyday, like you can get glam. There is definitely room to get some contrast. There's a great black going in here, some nice deep browns. I'm not saying it's not enough, but just keep in mind, like this is not going to be your most wild and crazy palette. Okay. I think the last one I did, I did go a little bit golden. So maybe I'll use some of these like rosier colors today. I'll go into this soft kind of dusty lavender and get this going in the crease. But the textures are really good and you'll find that you don't get a lot of um, powder fallout either, which gives you one less thing to have to really try to control as you apply. I could see this as being a really good palette for mature eyes who, you know, I'm not saying m mature eyes can't do a little sheen and shimmer. By all means, do what you like and what you want to do. But I know a lot of people, if you're trying to not exaggerate wrinkles, you might be more comfortable with more mattes. So this might be a good mature eye palette. This could also be a good beginner's type palette because again, the shades are very easy to use. I'm going to use this shade right here, which is super light, but it's got like a little bit of pink tone in it. I think that's what makes it look so brightening. And I'm going to get a little bit of this going just in the inner corner. Then I think I'll also take some of this rosy shade here and we will just kind of let this come up over top of what we put in the crease and see how that just intensifies the color of everything a little more. We've got our overall crease kind of figured out in our inner part of our lid. Let's do a little bit of highlight with this shade too. Just a little brightness up under the brow. That's nice. There's an eye brush that came with this palette in this kit, which was 
like this palette and a bunch of different eye products and it's got like a little blender side and a flatter side and this is fine like don't get me wrong it, it works but I ran into another brush called the base and contour brush it's got a pretty big side for like getting shadow on the lid but I love 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 the size of this little guy for the crease like it's a little bigger than that morphe brush that I a lot of times use as an outer corner but it's still like just fine and it's really nice under the eye too but I wanted to get a little use out of this. I'm going to use the larger side to take this rosy shade and just kind of pat that on the lid. But this brush and this brush alone could really do a lot of your look. But this is just like a really shimmery, dusty rose, kind of barely there pink that I'm putting across the lid right here. And then I want to create a little more contrast by taking the black and using this little end of the brush, which I think is very handy, very good. And just get that going here. I heard a weird sound over there. I don't know what it was. Hello? <laughs> See, and then you can take this other side, this larger side, flip it over and kind of like almost blend with it. It's a pretty handy little brush. But I guess what I sort of wanted to show in this video was the fact that, yes, this palette can go a little dramatic, you know? It's got that capability. I'm going to take a little more of the black now with a really flat brush, so I've got all that control, and I'm just putting this on the lid, which I think, I don't know, makes everything mesh a little bit better. But for that black to be as easy to use as it was, I mean, props to the formula, because I had no trouble with that at all. Taking just a dab more of the pink, and kind of letting that come up over the edge. Love it. And then I'll take our little plum that's right over here. I've used a lot of this shade. And I'm just gonna use the small end of that little brush, the one that I used in the outer corner with the black. And I'm just letting this roll right under the lower lash line. Perfect like size and level of darkness for a smoky eye here, right? I would say this gives me like a little wider swath of um, color than my normal pencil brush does, and I kind of like that. Next thing that I have, and this wasn't even something I thought to try, this was something they sent to me, it's the Split Decision Gel Liner in the shade Luna, which seems to be a really dark brown. The one side is like a dark matte brown, and the other side is a little bit lighter and has just a little bit of shimmer to it. And then this brush, the number five brush, so nice nice. A super duper fine tip here that's just very easy to control. This is super creamy and easy and then it sets and it doesn't move. And then you've got this more smudgy side which is also really nice. I'm going to use just the dark brown matte side and pick up a little bit here on my brush. Now as far as cream and gel liners go, I still feel like the tartest that's squeezing out of that tube that has a little built-in like palette opening. That's pretty much where it's at. That's the least fussy way to apply cream and gel liner for sure. Um, but this precise little brush, I can't get over it. Like, I'm going to do a great wing here. And you might think, well, that's only something you can really pull off well with a liquid liner. No, this does it too. And this dark brown is just so dang dark. I'm not sure you'd even totally pick it out as being brown. Almost looks black. But if you've tried other things from this brand that you're not seeing me use in this video, please let me know. I am all ears. I know that just because you feel like you've tried a lot from something doesn't mean you know everything. What's worked? What hasn't worked so well? Tell me in the comments section. But I feel like largely this brand is really fantastic and it's just like nobody's talking about it. And I guess what also impresses me just beyond the application is the performance of the products, right? The staying power. That's a huge part of it for me because really most of the time I do, I do not like to be tending to makeup throughout the day. I expect a lot out of staying power. And I'm going to use just this other side with some powder for today. I'm going to go back into that plum, which this plum is a prime example of a shade that has a little shimmer, but it just doesn't get over the top like like metallic on your eyes. It's really just a very classic eye palette. Um, would be a great like bridal kind of eye palette, I feel. For mascara, this was the Effort Lash that I used back in that video. It came in the grouping of products with the eye 
eyeshadow palette, so it was in the QVC video, and I didn't have a rave review for this, and it wasn't like that was my first time trying it, but it was early in this product's life, and since that time, I will say I have liked it more. And that's what sometimes will happen with certain mascaras, like the formula will just maybe dry out a little bit or something, and I'll just tend to like it a little bit better as time goes on. So this is a rubber brush with a lot of bristles and then it also has a few, I don't know if I can clean it off to where you can see here, a few real short bristles coming off the end. So if you're willing to go like that at the end of your brush, you can make use of those bristles and kind of get in like that direction. But I'll just pop this on. I think it's a really good defining mascara. I just always want the most, you know, if I can get it. I want really big lashes. And even though I feel like now I'm liking this a little better than I did when it was brand new, I still don't feel that it builds to the desired effect as fast as like an IT Cosmetic superhero. But if you're willing to apply a few coats, I think you will be very satisfied. And it's also not doing the bad things, you know, like clumping my lashes all together. Like that's just the worst, isn't it? But still, I have not tested this mascara staying power on my lower lash line. I'm so glued to this stuff. This Cover Girl Clump Crusher water resistant there. So again, I don't wanna take any chances today. So we'll put a little of that there. I'll just continue on to this other eye real quick. feel like the lashes are actually really nicely um, separated and I'm seeing each one it kind of volumize each lash it just took a little extra time to get there from what I've been able to grow accustomed to now for lips something I purchased is this trio of like dual lipstick and lip glosses here and I've used these a lot I traveled with these over Christmas time and actually got a lot of wear out of them just because I thought it was handy for the nice natural lip look and I wasn't having to grab for a lot of different products. I just put all these in my bag and they really aren't all incredibly far off from one another, but you do know you're coming into a nude lip trio. So it's gonna stay true to that description for sure. But um, the different shades we have here, lipsticks are across the bottom, the glosses that are attached are across the top. This shade is Nude Beach down here. I've worn a lot of that shade. You'll see none of the lipsticks go too light. Like we're not talking erase your lips nude on any of these. They all give your lips a little extra life. But this is kind of like a little bit of a dusty rose color. And then the sheer gloss on that one actually looks just a little bit pinky. Then we have Pillow Talk right here. Soft, warm, neutral, maybe a little bit of brown in there, a little bit of brown that you can note in that um, gloss end as well. It's just a little bit deeper. And then Flirt Alert, this lipstick has the most pink in it and then it's kind of a peachy gloss over the top. So I think I'm gonna use that one on my lips today. Here's what I would say about these lipsticks and lip glosses. Very comfortable first and foremost, but very traditional, like a traditional cream lipstick is what you're getting with all of these duos and a very traditional gloss to go along with it. So it's not anything that's really changing the game. However, I do find everything to be of utmost like comfort on the lips. So again, this is a shade that has the most kind of pink to the lipstick. It's called Flirt Alert. So it does have that creamy, smooth, hydrating feel to the lips. I like it. And then your gloss is this kind of sheer peach. You've got a skinny doe foot applicator that kind of looks a little bit like a scoop and you can just pop this on top for a little extra shine. The glosses with all of these, they don't really like change the look so much because they're all relatively sheer. You could wear them on their own, but on top of the lipstick, their main purpose I feel is to add shine and they're not too greasy or too thin. So you feel like you got some good cling going on and they smell exactly like canned vanilla frosting, which in my world, that's a huge bonus. Just like that, we're smoothing out the hair because the look is done, my friends. Full face of Doll 10 Beauty. I think the one thing I would do is maybe add just a little more blush because are you really doing enough if you're not adding a little extra blush at the end of your look? And I'm gonna do some of that kind of little deeper blush shade. Yes, that's what we needed. Oh, I forgot my little hidden sneaky highlighter trick. Here's what you do. You go back to that eyeshadow palette, the um, master palette and go to the light shade that's in the lower corner because these are all mattes, but this one does have some shimmer and it goes slightly on a pinky tone which makes it very, very bright. And this is a really pretty highlight. So yeah, just go for it, you know? If you got this palette, 
try this because it's stunning. It's definitely not pink in a anybody's gonna really see pink way. It's more just pink as in like the undertone of it, I feel. It's just kind of cool. If you've tried anything from this brand, let us know what your experiences were like in the comments section below. But um, the Hydra Lux and the Hydra Gel products here, Hydra Gel Foundation, Hydra Lux Concealer, I do feel they gave really nice coverage and just a really pretty look to my skin because they were matte, but they weren't too dry looking. But on the flip side of that, they also weren't extra hydrating either. So again, if you're a dry, dry skin person and you've used this stuff, let us know how it went because I'm normal to dry and I feel like this wasn't too drying for me. This golden pearl bronzer is definitely one of my favorites. The blush palette was just okay. I do like this master palette for eyes. I just think you got to be aware of like what's your purpose? What's your intent here? Do you like the everyday shades? Do you like things that don't go too warm? And do you like not too many shimmers? Like that's what this is giving you. Another one of my ultimate favorites would be the Archmaster. I think that's a brilliant product. Also really love this Luna Split Decision Gel Liner. That goes on so well. And a couple of brushes that I think are just incredible here are this base and contour brush for eyes. Like this gives you the really quick, like all over the lid, up into the crease, a little bit step. And then this brush is just the perfect size for outer corner. You saw I used black with that. I had tons of control. This one doesn't have a number on it, but this one one does this eyeliner brush, the number five. Super nice fine tip, and then you get the smudger side as well. The brush I used for concealer was good too. I just have quite a few things that are kind of like this, but this was what I used when I said I touched up with a little of the foundation one day. I just kind of blotted it on with this fluffy side of that concealer brush, which is the number two and just dabbed it all the way up through this area and I felt so like refreshed. I would like to say thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your time and for taking an interest in this video. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you again soon. Bye.